Theater of the Mind in Dungeons and Dragons is really cool and really easy to do, but how do you do it? What little things can happen? What are the slip-ups that could happen with miscommunications and people being on different pages in your mind? For the most part, most of us, I would say, maybe, I don't know, comment down below what you run and how you run Theater of the Mind or gridded battle maps or virtual tabletop maps or a mix of the, all of that. In general, I do run gridded battle maps. My combats are very technical, very spatially, tactically oriented and all that kind of stuff. And I love me some miniatures, right? But sometimes it's just, it's not, it's not worth it to take the time. Maybe it's not worth it for the duration of the combat. It's going to be a quick, fast paced combat. It wouldn't be worth the feel of the table to the oh, one second, guys, let me go get the map. And then you get the map and then you put the map down and you roll for initiative and the tension's gone. The tension's way gone. So theater of the mind is great for very quick, fast moments. That's mainly whenever I use it. It is definitely my go-to for those moments. So, and then we'll get into how to run it. But um, it's also very easy to prep because my God, you don't have to do anything. It's in your mind and it's in their minds. And as soon as you talk about it, it builds itself in your mind. You don't have to prep beforehand. You don't have to know where they're gonna go. You just have to have everything ready. And if combat happens, here we go. So <laughs> it's super simple and convenient. And there's been times when my game prep or life's going crazy or whatever, and I can't, I don't have enough time to get out a full battle map and draw out a full battle map. And I, and I, and I, in general, as a dungeon master, I don't like drawing battle maps out like live, like here we go. Oh, one second, you know, and drawing it out sometimes. Yes. If you didn't know where they're going or if it's really quick, sure. Once you've chosen to use theater of the mind, how do you actually run it? And what are some little things you can do to make it actually easier for your players to pick it up what you're saying? Because the biggest problem that I used to have, and even sometimes still have, honestly, is people understanding what you're saying and being on the literal same page and seeing what you're saying, right? So when I first did Theater of the Mind, I tried a lot of times just to really describe it, just really, really describe it every time. And then players would be like, wait, so where am I? Or like, where is this? Or who is there? It just gets, it gets clunky. So in general, something I like to do, whether it's online or in person, is I give a general view of what's going on. I give a bird's eye view of the battle map, not an actual battle map. I don't even have grid lines on it. I will literally get a scratch piece of paper and draw out the crappiest drawing you've ever seen of this thing. I've done a capture the flag, huge epic battle where all I did was I drew the map and that's it. And we started talking about what happened and it was the theater of the mind and all that stuff. But they understood logistically at least the foundation to create in their minds, right? I laid the groundwork for them to build on top of and run with in their own minds. So give the distances and spaces and there's a tower here and there's a this there and there's all this kind of stuff, right? So that's step one of, of giving them tools visually to be able to see what's happening. So at least we're a little bit on the same page. So there's not some big misunderstandings like, oh, I thought there was a huge gap there. No, 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 no. This is where everything's at. Okay, now let's go into where everybody's at. So now people only really have to imagine where people are in this space instead of the space that we all made up in our minds and we don't really know. So that's the first layer. Second layer you can add is little pieces onto it. And now you're starting to move towards grid of combat. So be careful there. But I have had little M&Ms or Skittles or small little tokens of their characters initials on it or something like that. Or shoot the miniatures. You know what I'm saying? And now we're getting to the point where we're literally almost about to play. But um, giving some sort of tangible things to remind or mark down, or if something big happens on the battlefield, draw it on the new piece of paper to give them something tangible there so that they can kind of see and keep track of things. And now that is all tangible tools to help people. But what if you're playing over Discord? Or what if you're playing in, uh, virtually and you don't have anything like that? Now, you could easily get a map and draw this little stuff with you know on the, on the screen and stuff. But let's say you're going all the way 100% theater of the mind, hardest difficulty setting possible. Here's some tips for that. When you're doing it, keep repeating things over and over again when logistical things happen. If a paladin and a uh, knoll are facing off and they're attacking each other. Cool. Describe that. But that's not that big of a thing. They're, people aren't going to get confused by that because they're in the same spot. There's no dynamic movement happening. But if the paladin is fighting this knoll and then runs across and jumps over the log to get to the other side to fight the basilisk or whatever the heck this random combat's turning into, and he slides down the slides down the cliff to fight the basilisk at the bottom. Okay, cool. 
that's a tactical logistical change. I'm going to need to keep that going for everyone else. So everyone stays on the same page. The ranger goes, I'm making up all of this as we go. The ranger goes and he attacks. He, he says he wants to attack the null. So I've described the attack you pull. And th I do this when they're rolling their stuff and when they're adding damage and in the downtimes, I'm not just like taking up all this exorbitant time, just yanking on. So when they're doing these rolls, I describe, they say they attack the null. Okay, roll for attack. You pull back your bow, you draw, you shoot the arrow at it just as the paladin runs off, slides down the hill towards the basilisk. What'd you get? And then they see what they got and they get the damage. And the damage, the null yelps out loud as you whatever. And then the wizard says, oh, I want to do this and that to the basilisk. And I'm like, all right, the basilisk, the paladin slides straight down the hill as your spell. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? So little bitty moments where you just sprinkle back in just to get that little pulse d d d reminder of what's going on when there's logistically moving pieces moving around if the paladin stood there and attacked it i probably wouldn't have referenced the paladin again just for the sake of th i'm very tactical with my words of when i say certain things of all right, movement's happening. I'm going to make sure to re-say that movement three plus different times so that we all know where we're at and guarantee you at the top. Oh, ooh, so so the, the monster's turn. This is my moment because I'm the dungeon master. The basilisk paladin slides down the hill and, and bites right before. Looks like it's about to bite the paladin, but then burrows into the side of the hill, going straight forwards towards about maybe underneath you towards the where the wizard's at. So now... Even just now in this random combat we've had, we have a ranger attacking a knoll. We have a paladin sliding down a hill and there's a wizard somewhere. So let's say he's up here. And then this basilisk burrows into the mountain and starts to make its way towards what you would gather to be underneath the wizard. What do you do? And then we keep going, right? So now we can have these, these things be tactically described and repeated when there's movement happening. So then at the top of the round, I, as a dungeon master, I'm going to give a pulse check of the entire thing and like a, a synopsis of where everything's at based on what just happened in that round, just to really make sure we're all on the same page so everybody can go enter into their next turn clean and clear, right? And of course, if they have questions or clarifying questions, we're on top of that. So overall, make sure when there's movement things happening, really make sure to repeat those again. And I should have said this probably first before anything else really describe the layout of where things are before you start talking about monsters don't start talking about monsters yet you got to talk about the terrain first the layout of everything first then start talking about the monsters because they got to know where everything's at right and then there's more there's, there's so many i love theater of the mind and I, I really hope this helps you guys so um the huge layout of the thing anytime there's movement make sure you re-describe that and at the top of the lineup make sure that you re-say where everyone's at and then we go right on into the next person you're up right and find those little downtime windows while people are rolling for stuff to do all of these things and then the biggest tip i learned this from uh, professor dungeon master um maybe it's a system from another game and that I'm sure but um close near and far close near far there are three distant settings i have whenever i run theater of the mind close is pretty much melee combat and you could rephrase these if you wanted to have like melee close and far sure you could do that um but close is i can attack them in melee this turn you know what i'm saying if you're close with somebody you are meleeable this turn close right and then there's near which would mean you could use your movement to get there right so now if you think of three layers of combat uh, close near far if i in one turn i could move here and do something right or i could move here and dash and that's my whole turn to try you know what i'm saying um and if you have these distance zones then it's going to be a lot easier for people to understand movement and what they're capable of doing in the game because there are game rules that apply and there's all these like you have 30 feet of movement and the ranges on spells and all this kind of stuff right so that near zone is is melee to 30 feet like melee to 30 feet there we go and then we have 35 feet to 60 feet and then we have a lot of spells are only 60 foot range and then we have beyond that right up to 120 feet so 60 to 120 feet if you wanted to get technical but People now know where they have to be and to be able to cast spells in certain spots. And they know um, how close, based on those vocabulary terms that I set up with them, where they're at. And the final thing is the places and zones of interest, you can call them, is if they are fighting the Basilisk example. So there would be the hilltop, the canyon, and the river. Done. 
right? And maybe I throw in uh, the big tree. So there's a big, huge tree on the blah, blah, blah. And there's this huge plateau, right? And then there's a river at the bottom of the chasm. And then there's a hill, sliding hill. So you have sliding hill, river, plateau, tree. And those are these zones of interest, right? And to go from the tree to the plateau is one movement, right? It would be close, right? If you were somewhere right next to the tree and you wanted to run and attack some on the plateau, go for it. You're good. But if you wanted to run to the plateau, then slide down the hill and make an attack, whoo, 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 you just move two zones. You see what I'm saying? So I hope all of that, <laughs> uh, this rant of theater of the mind helps you think, yeah, theater of the mind outside the box. <laughs>